of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate St. John Paul II. Had a tremendous impact on my life, and I'm sure on you, as well as the entire church throughout the world. We ask for his intercession this day. As we prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave blessed St. John Paul II to be shepherd of the whole church and made him resplendent with wondrous virtue and teaching, grant that we who venerate the merits of such a bishop may shine with good deeds before others and burn with love for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I know that good does not dwell in me, that is, in my flesh. The willing is ready at hand, but doing the good is not. For I do not do the good I want, but I do the evil I do not want. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So, then I discover the principle that when I want to do right, evil is at hand, for I take delight in the law of God, in my inner self. But I see in my members another principle at war with the law of my mind, taking me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Miserable one that I am, who will deliver me from this mortal body? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. Teach me wisdom and knowledge, for in your commands I trust. Lord, teach me your statutes. You are good and bountiful. Teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let kindness comfort me. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your love is my delight. Lord, teach me your statutes. Never will I forget your precepts. For through them you give me life. Lord, teach me your statutes. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. Lord, teach me your statutes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. 
You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it is going to rain, and so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say that it is going to be hot, and so it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you are to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. With our amazing weather forecasting, they saw it coming from a long ways away. The rain was coming. They forecasted it, predicted it, said it was going to happen, and it's happening. We should be able to see the signs. Of course, the greatest sign before them at that time was Christ before them. But also the signs that are indicative of the presence of God that we should be able to see God and understand how God works and moves in our life and in our world. We're very advanced in our science and we could see out into space and we can look at the smallest, you know, uh, things in uh, the world and we know so much. But one of the hardest things to figure it out is our heart. And that's what Jesus knows. And Jesus understands what's happening in our life. St. Paul understands as well. He says, I am so confused. You know, I know what I need to do, but I don't do it. Anyone else ever happened to you? Only two people. All of us. All of us. This resonates with every single person, every single saint who's ever walked this earth says, yeah, I know what I need to do, but I don't always do it. Paul says, I do that evil. And I don't do the things I, I want to do. He's, he's perplexed by this. And this inclination that we have is called concupiscence. That all of us, every single person, has this within them, in their flesh, this inclination to sin, to evil. How do we rise above this? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. That's the only way. Because if not, there's this infinite chasm to say, I'm going to fight, fight, fight. No, it's by the grace of God. To be able to suppress, to put that down, because it's always part of our life, but to be able to allow that grace to grow in my life, to have a peace in my life, to say, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do the evil. I'm not going to do the sin because I prefer to live in the light. I prefer to follow Christ. Paul's honest. He's honest with his struggles, which makes him very relatable. That when we are able to share with others that we too struggle, that all of us struggle, because maybe the, your friends think you're so perfect. You come to Mass every day. And if your friends think, oh, you're so holy. And you should say, really? You think I'm that holy? Well, let me tell you, my, mo my mom would hear that often. I know my sister, sometimes she watches from Rome. So I have to be careful what I say. But my mom would always say, because people would talk about our family, seven kids, we'd always come to Mass, we never miss Mass, and fill a whole row up. And everyone's like, your family is so holy, 
You have such an amazing family. And she says, oh, really? Why don't you just take a ride with us going home? We'll have several fights in the cars on the way home, and, and it's not as holy as you think. So by appearance, but if we're honest, we think, you know what? We all have this struggle, this battle that's going on. What are we going to do about it? Well, if it's all about me, I'm going to lose. But if I look up and say, Lord, give me the grace today. Help me to rise above that inclination I have to do whatever, to lie, to gossip, to take something that doesn't belong to me. Whatever it is that we're battling against, God's grace is much greater. And lastly, just to see how the grace of God works in the life of John Paul II, if you, we all pretty much know his story, but how he rose from such a difficult life, losing his mother, communism, working in the coal factories, of such persecution in his life, but how God's grace was allowed him to continue to, to love and to serve and to grow in holiness and to do so much for the church. I know that he had a great impact on my vocation to the priesthood as you know, several of the World Youth Days, young people of the world. He began that. And having all the young people of the world, they think, who's this old man that attracts young people? Well, it was the Vicar of Christ. Not that old man, John Paul, but the Vicar of Christ, the one who's in place of Christ, that he is the one that attracts. Why? Because the grace was flowing through him. Please stand. Let us now offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father who knows all of our needs. Let's pray through the initiation of St. John Paul II for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our civil leaders, that they stand for truth, for justice. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for the rain, and that we will get an abundance of snow to give us water for the year, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, for those who continue to battle COVID, for those who suffer in so many other ways, we pray for their healing, for their consolation, we pray to the Lord. And we pray today for the soul of Anaceto Tabusula, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that you hold in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God and Father, we pray that you pour forth your grace upon us. Help us to rise above that inclination that we all have towards sin so we can truly live as your sons and daughters. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. May, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May 
Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present on the feast day of Blessed St. John Paul II may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world, through Christ our Lord. <coughs> The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with all the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord, our God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, <clears throat> he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to the 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of blessed St. John Paul II, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our mortal life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. Six hundred sixty-nine.